All right, today we're gonna to have a bit of a look at the true scale process for Mark IV. So this is different to the Mark III uh, true scaling. The Mark III is more complicated. This involves more green stuff, but I think it's a lot simpler uh, overall. It, it takes more time because there's two applications of green stuff, um, but it's simpler, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna go through and you can see I've got 20 Marines here. I've already cut this guy's legs off. He's gonna be our first victim. Um, I have basically laid out all the bits here. I, you can't see all of them in this shot, but yeah, there's all the bits that I need for these, these guys are here. I'm gonna do 20 in this batch, five which are going to have these um, missile launchers, which I, I don't know how they go in the game. I just think they look rad. So we're going to go with those. So we're going to have five of these dudes with these. We're going to have five dudes with these, the plastic ones, because I've accumulated five of these. So we're going to have 10 rocket guys. And then I'm just going to have a tactical squad of Mark IVs. Um, they're all going to be converted. They're going to be, you know, bolter guys. They're just going to have bolters, most of them. But yeah, we'll work on making them look a bit different, a bit interesting, not just standing there with their helmets on, you know, shooting at something. Uh, yeah, so let's have a look. This, These guys, the big difference with these guys is that you will need this tube. This is 3 16th in the old money uh, or 4.8 millimeter tube. Um, styrene tube just from the, heart, the craft store. So we are going to cut this into sections with our special pipe cutter. So all we do, you can see that, we just get the sections in there. It's not, I don't measure it. I don't make it, I haven't made a jig or anything. Um, what I do is I know how it feels in my finger and I just go, go like that. So you tighten it up and then you just carefully turn him around and then um, so the way that I'll work is I'll do it like this and then I will go down a bit and I'll do it again and I'll do that 40 times so I'm not going to video all of that so I'm going to do that 40 times uh, and then uh, I'll come back to you right on. okay I have cut 40 of these little uh, pieces of styrene. Uh, you can see I have stuck one together already with um, plastic cement. This is the stuff I use. It's really good. It's the same as the Citadel, I'm sure. It's got a little nozzle. It's really handy. Um, you can see this will be the next stage, adding the green stuff. And if we're looking at height difference, it's a good height difference. It's about where you want it. Let's see if we can get it a bit better than that. It's um, it's enough. It's enough. It's just a little bit more actually than the um, Mark Threes. You you end up with a bit more on the Mark Fours. Uh, so, next step. Let's show you. Cutting these ones is a bit easier. Um, the only thing to look out for on these is really the stuff at the back. There's very little detail at the back here. This detail we can, uh, let's, yeah, we can sculpt that back in with the green stuff at the end. Um, you'll notice that I'm leaving these mold lines on. You want to leave the mold lines on, and I'll show you why when we stick it together. Um, but we're going to be cutting just in the middle is a is a good spot in the middle, and if you can cut it in line, we keep that the parallel parallel to the bottom of the foot so that when you cut it, it it's roughly parallel. Uh, I find, oh, sorry, let's see if we can get that to focus. Yeah, cut it parallel. I'll cut that one like that. And then I'll cut the other one like that. So just standard GW plastic, this, this one, so we can get all of these out of the way. And we can we don't need a mask or anything for this, so let's um, let's cut. 
Again, just cut carefully. Uh, you can do these, I find you can do a lot more on, um, you do a lot more in a batch of these. So what I'll do is, this will be one night's work. So cutting all of those little pieces of styrene tube and then uh, cutting all these legs, 20 legs, and then sticking them all on and letting that, letting that set so letting that glue really harden up over the next couple of nights um, while that's while that's um, hardening up um, so probably tomorrow it'll during the day it'll harden up and then tomorrow night I'll come back to these guys and do the green stuff that'll be the first batch of green stuff the green stuff you'll see it goes on quite quickly the first sort of layer of green stuff so while that is drying, uh, while that is curing, I will um, I will go through and I will assemble, clean all the mould lines on the torsos, um, and I will go through and clean all the mould lines on all the, the guns and drill out the barrels and you know get, select all the bits that I want and get them all prepped, build all the torsos, build all the backpacks, chuck the backpacks on. Um, some of the more basic guys, I'll put the arms, I'll put the, I'll put the, the, the arms with the guys that are just holding the bolters, I'll put all of them on the torsos, get all of that ready. The helmets, I will drill out the bottoms of the helmets, um, and clean the mould lines, so put holes in the bottom of the helmets so that I can stick them all on little, um, corks, uh, on toothpicks, so that I can, I'll show you what I mean by that, um, so that I can, just like this. So they can paint the heads um, much, much easier. Uh, the most important thing is the face on any model because that's that's what that's how people interact with things. So I like to do them really carefully on their own separate base. Okay, so you can see, clean some of the um, the shavings, the plastic off. It really highlights how badly I have looked after my hands over the years. Um, there we go. And clean him up. Don't need to go crazy with that. Chuck a little bit of the glue on there. You can use quite a bit. Um, for people who are just maybe starting out or don't know that this um, this glue actually melts the plastic and it melts the styrene and it it creates a, a bond that is really strong because you're melting the, the two pieces together um, or three pieces for each leg as the case may be with these guys. So this is why we want to have kept the mold lines on. I'm going to chuck a little bit of glue on here, a bit of glue on here. You can see this is a lot quicker to do than the other ones. Um, so I'm going to stick this leg on. And I'm going to use the mould line on the side here as a guide for where it's going to be lined up. You then can look at the here and you can look at the profile of it and go, yep, I've got that right. You can see it looks super weird. This is all going to be filled in with um, green stuff. So you can see though that those mold lines are lined up. Sweet, that's going to work. Um, get him in there. You can see I've got a little bit of um, shaving and stuff on there that's fine we can clean all of that up you don't need to be too precious and we see he stands up so we've gotten the legs right now all you do is do that another 40 times see you soon we're back green stuff time for the next lot of marines so we'll start with this guy why not Good place to start as any. I've already mixed up the green stuff. It's ready to go. Um, crucial things that you will need on this one. Again, we need a little shaping tool. 
This one's always handy, but especially for this, this is the big boy. Um, this, uh, this big cheap one is perfect for doing these legs. You can see that the shape of it, it's like it was made for doing this. So let's crack on. Get a little bit, you need a little bit more. The reason, again, you have to use a th slightly thinner um, piece here, piece of um, styrene tube on this one, um, just so that it's just the shape of it, basically. You, you need to use the thinner piece. So we press him in. It's all about, if you can get this, like I said, I think in the last video, um, if you can get this as close to where you need it as you can, then it saves you a lot of um, saves you a lot of time and mistakes because you could just so we're just gonna try and get that as neat as we can there. Get this guy and he can see what, how that's. Basically, done most of the work for us. Um, it will need, in a couple of days, it will need a bit of a sand and it may need a further application, um, but it's pretty close at this stage. So you can see that. If you were going to true scale a whole army, um, yeah, and you you weren't particularly fussed about Mark III, this is the way you would do it for sure. Um, see how long that's taken? Like that's oh, this video has been going for not even three minutes. So, yeah, you'll end up with that there. Yeah, you may need to do another um, green stuff application. You may not. Um, we can just tidy up this now where it's gone over. Um, and I will show you just very quickly. The only bit that will need to be dealt with is with this join here. See where it meets, where the uh, green stuff meets the. So you can either go all the way to the bottom, which works too. If you want to go all the way to the bottom, if you've got enough, if you've put enough stuff on there and you want to go all the way to the bottom, that's fine. Or you can just go part of the way. That works too. And then you, all you need to do is wet sand it. So I'll give you a very rough rundown of the wet sanding process now with the legs that I did the other day. So they've been they've been set for over 48 hours now, but you can see we've got all of our detail is still on here. Um, and boom. True scale legs. That is a lot easier than Mark III, yes? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm telling you it is. So, here's one that we made earlier. Now, I've deliberately done this one pretty rough on one side and quite well on the other. So, this side's a bit rough. You can see this is going to need to be filled. But before we fill, we get this product. Now, 
I don't know what you call this. I found this at the Hobby Store called Hobby Co in Sydney. I don't know if they sell these anymore because Hobby Co seems to be just selling Gundam and fucking toys. But this is basically sandpaper. It's got a different couple of different sorts of um, coarse and fine and ultra fine. Um, yeah, this is a great place to start. So get him wet. And then you just go like this. This this um, tool is really fantastic. Um, I don't know where I'm going to get more of these um, sanding belts, but I absolutely love this thing. I can't recommend this thing highly enough. Have a have a look on. I guess Amazon's probably going to sell it. So you can see we are just smoothing it out. This is going to need another little coat of um, green stuff. Now, you could probably get away with uh, using liquid green stuff, but what I do with my liquid green stuff, and this was something I discovered by accident, uh, I left it left the pot open for a while and I it, it sort of set a little bit and then I put it back and it was it's not as liquidy so this is like a putty and so I I've, it, <laughs> I managed to recreate it and uh, now I've got this nice gloopy goopy sort of consistency on on this pot of green stuff this liquid green stuff and for filling in little gaps like this seems to work very well again you've got to keep it wet and you let it sort of I find that if I do this it's a really efficient way to gap fill And I'm barely touching this now. I'm just really using it to guide it into those little imperfections. And we'll let that set for another 48 hours. Probably 48 hours. To probably be right in 24, but we'll see how we go. Um... Yeah, and then I'll get my sander back onto it. So I'm going to leave this guy. I could be sanding that, but I'm going to crack on with getting these guys done. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? See you um, in a minute. All right, next stage. I have let everything set. It's been 48 hours of setting time now. And what I'm doing is I'm just giving the green stuff a bit of a sand. The way I'm doing that today is, uh, so you can use you can use the tool that I showed earlier. Uh, let me just get this set up for you. So I've got this tool here. You can put different um different grades of uh sandpaper on this one like this um but i find this now has worn down i need to go and buy some more belts for that uh, so what i'm now using is a piece of this stuff and this is uh, again this is a, i think this is a this is god hand um flexible sanding paper uh, and I've got a few different coarsenesses here but what I've done is I've just cut a strip off you can see I've cut a strip off uh, this one which is a 800 from memory uh, no it's not an 800 it is a I think that's a 400 actually it's a 400 uh, so what I do is I get a bit of water on it I hold it like this so it's very similar to what I was using before and I just go like this 
And then I go around and I do all of the sanding. And this, obviously it gets rid of the mold lines on that section of the leg at the same time as well. Um, but this, you end up with a really smooth finish. Um, you wouldn't really be able to tell that this has been um, modified. Yeah, this is great. So if you, I'm not sure if we can see that a bit better. So that is nice and smooth. I've still got all these mold lines up here to get rid of, but yeah, we're looking pretty good there, hey? So I'll go around and I'll do this one now. And then I just have to do this uh, another 40 times. Um, you can cut this to different thicknesses as well. Um, so you can use this for your Mark 3s as well. Let's have a look at a Mark 3. So, a bit of that on there. You just got to be careful of the bolts with these ones. That's why you just go a bit, a bit more gently gentler more gently be gentle anyway don't get the bolts um we'll see that this give us an, uh, a really nice smooth finish we're almost ready for the rest of the build so yeah, you can see that this this true scaling process does take time um i quite enjoy the sanding part I'll usually just put a um, put some YouTube videos on or listen to some podcasts or something and just sit here and sand it all. Uh, and, yeah, I'll work through. Don't worry about – I generally don't – you don't need the 200. Um, I'll now go through 400, and then I'll probably just go straight to the 800. I find that's, that's good enough. Um, if you were using maybe – if you were doing like a, a really – wanted to do a really smooth um, airbrushed finish, um, then, yeah, go to a 1,000, uh, 1,200, you know, go as far as you want, really. This, these God Hand tools are amazing. Um, apparently, they do a set of clippers that is really worth um, investigating. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like these, um, these little sounding... Um, pads or whatever you call them emery boards but yeah got to be wet um otherwise i find that the the green stuff just it's all gummed up doesn't work but this um yeah and it also stops when you if you're doing this on just raw resin um with without the water you'd obviously be generating that nasty dust again which you don't want to do i think i've really mentioned that a lot of times before so this is um this is me for the next for the foreseeable future it will take a while to get all of this sanded so we can just go in here so this has been cut deliberately to be the right size for the gap you get it as close to the, the size of your gap as you can um, yeah, and when I say gap I mean you know the the spacer the additional size that you've put on these legs you cut that about as close as you can anyway and you can just cut that with scissors um but yeah it's yeah it's nice it's good it's got to be done uh and then at the end we'll have a we'll have a good result um so yeah you can do this just plow away at it and it'll get done it'll get done right so yeah all right, so I'm going to show you now how I go about assembling the next, the final stage, really. Um, these are the uh, rocket launcher guys. The only really important bit that I'm, I need to show you here is the um, torso lengthening. So as I did with the Mark III Marine, if you've watched that video, if you haven't watched that video, then um, it's on, on my profile there. I've stuck a little ball of green stuff in there. I've sat it down. On the um, on the socket, let it set. 
So now what we need to do, I've, um, I've decided to go with a head from, I think it's from the Skatari box. I think it just, it'll look cool with the, um, with the rocket launcher. These guys look sick. Anyway, that's one I did earlier. Um, yeah, so what we've got to do, I've just sat some green stuff in there and that's going to set. So this has just been pressed in. So what we need to do before we can go too much further, we need to pop him out. We need to get a little bit of our super glue and we need to just put a little tiny dollop of super glue in there. Super glue has dried up. Just take the top off that. All right, let's try that again. Just a tiny little dollop. You don't need much in there. Uh, and we put in. It's important to glue that because otherwise. Um, it, it won't it won't sit it won't stay there it will just it will come off if you keep picking it up it will come off only takes a second to set um, so let's might as well clean this mold line up now while we're here because it's going to be harder to do when there's rocket guy attached to it um, you can see there's all this little um, these this is from the wet sanding process all these little bits of stuff in the um, in the crevices. Uh, the way to clean that out is not with a scalpel, is with a stiff um, bristle dry brush is what I usually use and just a bit of water and you just get it in there. Um, pretty straightforward. It's not, not something we need to go too crazy about. So you can see here, we're gonna sit him like that. But first we are going to add our dick cloth, the all important dick cloth. So you just need a little bit of super glue. You get your dick cloth that we've made earlier. Now this one, I'm using one that has a little bit of a flaw in the uh, cast uh, because it's going to have a rocket in front of it. Um, yeah, so you can see we've got a little bit at the top here that we will trim off. A little bit of super glue. And we just slot him on there. You can see how neatly that goes in. That's gonna be nice and strong. And he's got a nice sort of robo man appearance. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll go around and I'll clean up all these little um, bits that need cleaning up. There's a couple of little mold lines here and there that need to be sorted out. I'll clean all of this up now. Uh, I'll let that set. So what I'll do is I'll go and do these five rocket guys, get all these guys to the same point. Um, uh, when you're batch making it in a batch like this, I find it's easier to to do it like this. Um, it's a lot, well, it's, it's a lot quicker. Um, just also like to have, if I've got five guys, you know, I find it's more interesting for me to change a couple of them slightly. So I won't have five identical guys. I'll have one with a head that's maybe a little bit, um, you know, a bit different to what you'd expect. Um, it's more fun to paint. So this, I'll let this set. And then when this uh, green stuff is set, I'll pull that out and paint him on a stick and then glue him back in at the end. Um, yeah, sorry, so what I'll do is I'll have uh, a couple of guys that are different. Um, so this guy will have that head I've got, and it doesn't need to be huge things. Um, this guy that's got a head that's got the um, different eye lens on it. I'll have a guy that's got one of these little tilting shields. Um, I'll have a guy that's got a different shoulder pad. Just slight variation um, helps, makes it look more fun. Anyway, there we go. Um, so that's True Scaling, a Mark V Marine. I, you'll see uh, pictures of the finished guys 
on Instagram. Um, but there's one, there's one there to look at. So now this guy still needs to be cleaned up a bit. I'll go around at this point, um, do a final check. So priming, I probably won't be priming these until tomorrow. Um, so you can see this guy at the back here, I will put, I'll have to clean all of this out obviously. A um, couple of little bits to clean up here and there, but pretty good. I'll probably put, um, I'll put something at the, at, on his back here to cover that green stuff line. Probably something like that. Pretty easy. Um, but the height of these guys is good now. This is the same height as our Mark III Breacher Marine. Pretty happy with how the Mark III Breachers have turned out. Breaches are awesome. I don't know if he's allowed to take all of those weapons, but he just looks better like that. Uh, and that's a cool head as well. So, so done similar idea. One of the five will have a bare head. Um, the idea behind this army is that it's alfarious, so everyone should have a shaved head and they'll all be painted, their faces are all painted the same way. Um, yeah. So there's your Mark III true scale. Uh, this guy's a little bit bigger than a Primaris Marine, actually. Um, get the Primaris Marine. Uh, if we look at this guy, he's actually a little bit chunkier. So, yeah, the breaches are really cool. I really love breaches. Anyway, uh, yeah, so rockets, Mark IV, Mark three um there's twice as much work in this <laughs> it's super easy yeah can't wait to paint them all right thanks for watching